everyone. So while up in the conifer woods in October, I found this large specimen of the Dyer's maize gill or Phaeola swinitsii. Uh, it's a bracket fungus that has been used for years, traditionally for dyeing yarns and fabrics. You can see the yellow pore structure underneath there. It's almost velvety textured. And here's a close up photograph of the pores underneath the cap. And you can see they're a little bit maze-like, hence the common name of maize gill. And then on the top, you can see all the conifer needles as they grow at the base of conifer trees in plantations quite commonly. Um, it is a tree parasite that eventually kills the tree, but then it becomes saprobic on that tree. It just feeds off that dead wood. And the dyes it yields are sort of yellows through oranges to browns. It's traditionally used for dyeing fabrics and yarns, but I thought I'd give it a go on some paper. because I do a lot of paper staining with tea, coffee and inks. So it seems like a good idea for an experiment. And I've made mushroom paper before with a birch polypore. And, and here's an image of that homemade mushroom paper with a picture in ink of the birch polypore on it. But I've not dyed anything with a mushroom yet, so this is a first. OK, I've got the dyer's polypore now here in the kitchen and I've got a big stock pot on to boil up some water. I'll just break this mushroom up into little bits. I'm going to simmer it and see what kind of colours come out and then I'll, I'll dip my papers into it and see how it works. And uh, I'll get back to you. Then you can see it simmering away now in the stock pot in the water and it's releasing its golden colours and oranges and ambers. And just a quick shot of me here, sorry about the wobbling. Um, I'm just laying on some leaves into some paper to, to do some eco dyeing in the mushroom stock, just to see, it's an experiment to see how it comes out. It's a technique I've done quite a lot before and I love the results. So I did the dyeing of the papers yesterday and they've had overnight to cool down and dry off. And they're still a little bit damp, but and these are the papers. Um, you can see I just folded a sheet of A4 in half and just dunked them into the mushroom dye mixture that was in the stock pot and let them take on the colour. And you can see it's a lot like coffee or tea dyeing, perhaps slightly yellower. And there is some variegation, some darker areas. And you can see there where it was folded. I really like that actually. I like to have a variegated look. You can see there. And um, having the pages folded like that are good for if you want to make a book. So they're instant pages for a book. And it is slight, it was slightly thicker than a computer paper. It's a thicker paper but not that thick. You can see it's still quite flimsy. And this one has really taken on some dark patches from the oak leaves that I added to the mix. Because, um, and this is how I did it. I, with two old kitchen tiles. And I wedged the paper together and tied them up with string and put into the dye bath with the addition of the leaves. So there's oak leaves and oak leaves are good because they release a tannin. They've got tannins in there, in them and they release a, a darker. And you can see how variegated that is with some kind of leaf veining. And again, I folded it in half, but the same size cut the same size as the, the kitchen tile that I used. So you can see, and then I, as I folded them over, I added just more leaves. And so the back side has got leaves too. I let this package soak in the dye bath for, and boil and sort of simmer away with the, with the gas on for about 
three quarters of an hour. So they were it, it wasn't just dunked in and out like the other papers I did. Here you can see I had maples on the other side, but there's more oak leaves. See there. Ah, you can see oak leaf here. So you can just see it's just a very faint uh, um, effect, a ghosting of leaves. There's my maple leaves. Now that's lovely. You can really see the, the maple leaves there. I hope you can see that. The impression. And there's some redder dyes come out of the leaves there because they were red. You can see they've lost all their colour. There, that's a really good one. And here, where the ferns, you can see it's slightly greener. And we've got an impression of the ferns. So you can try any um, leaves to do this eco dyeing. And I put them in. I put it in the mushroom stock water, but you can just do it with plain water. Just boil it in just normal water. And also, a lot of other people use mordants, like they add iron, so some rusty iron nails, perhaps thrown in, and that creates a different. Um, it changes the colour slightly, so the chemical composition. Some people also use alum, which is like a powder. And again, that changes the chemical composition and so you get different colours and also it can help with light fastness, I think. But I didn't have any iron or I didn't have any alum, so I just did it with the, the mushrooms and the water. So there you see, I pressed them between two kitchen old kitchen tiles I had lying around and then I tied it up completely with string and made sure it was really secure that it wouldn't come undone and there we can see some green there on the, the ferns so I'm really going to let those dry now because they're still damp and it's very very it it's very very delicate when it's damp um, it can rip easily so there we go that was an interesting experiment now would I use the dyer's maize gill again for dyeing no, I don't think so, because you can get a very similar look with tea or coffee staining and much quicker and easier. You don't need the mushroom at all for this colours, I don't think. And um, for the eco dyeing with the leaves, you can just do that with ordinary water. So there you go. I probably wouldn't use the dyer's pot mushroom again, but it was a great experiment to see how, how it would work. So here I've actually got some ink caps making their own ink. So they're in the process of deliquescing, which is when they release their spores in this sort of black inky soup. And it did once used to be used as an ink, but um, in the past. So this is a great little experiment going on here. And here's a lovely photograph of the shaggy ink caps, Caprinus comatus. It's a photo from Pixabay. And this is the mushroom in my ink pots. And this is another species of ink cap. It's the common ink cap. And it, you can also make ink from this one as well, but it's just a bit smaller. And here I've got my two pots of ink caps, the shaggy ink caps that I collected before. And they've been in the fridge for three or four days and you can see they've really rotted down into a soup, a black soup. Um, one has got more lumps in, this one is finer, so it's already a really good ink consistency. But I think I might, I think I'm going to heat this up, this one, give it, boil it up. Um, I've put I've added a couple of drops of clove oil because apparently according to Roger Phillips mushroom book 
if you add a couple of cloves, it prolongs the life of the ink. I guess it just stops mould growing and things. But I've added a couple of drops of clove oil. Um, so it does quite, smell quite a lot. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to boil this up. And there we go. I've got two ink cap inks now. I've just decanted them into these sterilised jars. One is a purer liquid. The other has got more bits in. And I heated it up and it um, a lot evaporated, so it's much thicker. Anyway, I'll try drawing with it soon. And just for added interest now, I thought I'd show you some of my dyed papers. This is one that I dyed with acrylic inks and pressed ferns into it. Um, this is one dyed again just with acrylic inks, just spraying them on with water as well. Oh, this drawing on the left was done on coffee stained watercolour paper that I scattered salt on top and then left to dry and then drew on it with pen. This one is an eco dye where I've pressed in the leaves as in before. Um, oh, now this, this here, this page, this is an eco dyed page and here you can see some of the leaves have formed a resist so they kept the white of the paper they've kind of masked them out here you can see an oak leaf here and these colors were accentuated because i added some red onion skins into the boiling water and all these beautiful colors came out so that was red and white onion skins so that's a great idea if you do eco dyeing, if you try it out and you've got some old onion skins, chuck it in. You can also use things like turmeric for that. That would be bright yellow, obviously. But look at this, this big leaf here. There's one that I've done collages on. Here's another one. Um, you can see the gorgeous patterns. These are left by leaves. This pink was a lichen because you can also dye with lichens. And this pink, that was a species of lichen that I've thrown in. And there, I think you can see a lichen branch there. And there, this is gorgeous. So this is some of the things you can do with eco dyeing. The process I showed you with the dyer's maize gill pot. Look at this beautiful patterning here. I mean, it's just got a very, it's like a, got a watercolor effect going on here. And there as a leaf. That's a red oak leaf. So it's something to play around with and experiment with. These are just dyed with acrylic inks, these papers. And these are just normal printer papers. They're not thick watercolour paper. This was just the same papers I used with the mushroom dye that was slightly thicker than printer paper. These, the acrylic dyed papers, are just normal printer copy paper. Look at the effects. So you can have great fun with some inks, eco dyeing, spraying, <laughs> if you like. Oh, there's another one, look, the other side. And you can see how I've, you know, folded them in half. This book isn't stitched in. The pages are folded in half so that you can make book pages. And because this is a traveller's notebook style it's held in with elastic so you can easily slot pages in and out in this style of journal this this was a lichen this pink color green acrylic inks so there you go that's the fun you can have with eco dyeing and other dyeing experiments so there we go. In the next video, I'm going to do some drawing with the mushroom ink. So bye for now.